This is scapula. It's a flat bone present over the back of the shoulder region. For describing scapula, we follow rule of three. The rule of three is that it has got three angles. A lateral angle occupied by glenoid cavity, an inferior angle occupied by latissimus dorsi, and a superior angle occupied by trapezius. It has got three borders. One is the lateral border. This is the lateral border present between the lateral angle and the inferior angle laterally. This is the medial border of the scapula. This medial border of the scapula is present between the superior angle and the inferior angle. Then is the superior border. This is the superior border of the scapula that is present between superior angle and root of the coracoid process. It has got three processes. The three processes are one is spine of scapula, other is the acromion process that is the lateral projection of the spine of the scapula, then is the coracoid process. So three processes are spine of the scapula, chromion process of the scapula and the coracoid process of the scapula. I will describe shortly. Then rule of three is that we have got three fossas in the scapula. One fossa that is present on the front on the costal side, this is the subscapular fossa. Two fossas are present on the back. One above the spine is supraspinous fossa and one below the spine is the infraspinous fossa. So this is the rule of three. Now I'll describe these uh, landmarks in detail. So the lateral angle is occupied by glenoid cavity. This glenoid cavity is an oval shaped cavity which articulate with the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint or glenohumeral joint. This oval shaped cavity superiorly has got a tubercle that is known as the supraglenite tubercle as likewise inferiorly it has got a tubercle known as the infraglenite tubercle. So this is the lateral angle. This is the inferior angle that we can say is present between the lateral border and the medial border. This is the superior angle that is present between the medial border and the superior border. Now come to the borders. Between the inferior tubercle, here is the infraglenite tubercle. Between the infraglenite tubercle and the inferior angle, we have got this lateral border which is very much thick. Between the superior angle and the inferior angle, we have got this long medial border of the scapula. Then between the superior angle and the root of the coracoid process, here we have got this superior border. The superior border ends laterally. Its lateral end has got a depression or fossa known as the suprascapular fossa. After the borders, I am going to describe the surfaces. Scapula has got two surfaces. This is the outer surface. This is the posterior surface. This is the dorsal surface, which is divided into the spine process, divide this surface into two parts, into a suprascapular fossa and an infrascapular fossa. You can see here that these two fossas communicate with each other here. This is the spinoglenoid notch, which is present between spine and the glenoid process. So this is spinoglenoid notch which communicates infraspinous fossa with the supraspinous fossa. Now come to the costal surface, anterior surface or the ventral surface of the scapula. This is on the front side and it has got some bony lines. These are the bony ridges present over the subscapular fossa. After the surfaces, I am going to describe the processes. Scapula has got three processes. One is spine. This spine is a blade shaped process which divides the posterior surface into supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa. This is the spine. This spine has got an attached part and a free part. Here you can see it has got an attached border and a free border. The free border is known as the crest of the spine. The free border is known as the crest of the spine. This crest has got a lower margin that is the lower lip and has got an upper margin that is the upper lip of the spine. Now the second process can be easily described with help of this spine as the spine projects outward into a free process. 
the spine projects outward into a process that is known as the acromion the outward projection the lateral projection of the spine is known as the acromion this acromion has got a superior surface and an inferior surface it has got an outer margin this outer margin this outer margin is continuation of the lower lip of the crest of the spine lower lip of the crest of spine will continue into the outer border of the acromion this is the upper lip this is the upper lip of the crest of the spine which will continue into the inner border of the acromion so acromion has got a superior surface and an inferior surface has got an outer margin and an inner margin now the third process the third process known as the coracoid process as you can see its shape is like a bird beak so this bird beak like process has got two parts an attached part that is the base and a free part that is the apex of the scapula now the side determination for side determination always remember you have to mention three landmarks one for superior inferior so we can say coracoid process is superiorly one for posterior and anterior we can say the spine is on the posterior aspect and one for medial and lateral we can say this glenoid cavity is present laterally so this scapula belongs to the right side of the body